I am joined by Dr. John Darty, Science and Policy Analyst at the Environmental Law Institute. With expertise at the intersection of science and policy, Dr. Darty is here to discuss how Earth and space sciences can influence global decision making, drive innovation in AI, and strengthen climate change policies while fostering diversity in, in the scientific community. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for having me. So first off, how can science have a seat at the table when it comes to policy decisions and debates? So I think there's this misconception that science ends at the publication, and that's just not true, right? That's where science starts. And there has to be a lot of work, and that's the work of science policy, to take that publication, deliver it to decision makers, and also translate the most tangible, pertinent results of the publication to the decision makers that can then choose to act on it. So building out those effective sort of channels to both deliver and communicate the science, I think, is, is the job that we have as science policy professionals. And right now, with regards to policy, we're living in uncertain times with the new administration taking office. So what do you see with this that concerns you? And where are some areas where you're looking for possible common ground? So I think the, the most important thing is that all governments have access to and rely upon the most reliable scientific information. What I anticipate seeing is a movement from federal activity more to local and state activity, particularly around climate issues. And I think that's, that's both a, a challenge and an opportunity for those of us who work in science communication and policy um, to meet that important need of delivering this information to the local and state actors that are going to be taking the lead on these topics. Yeah, I love that the way you put that as also an opportunity. I think a lot of people just see the challenges associated with it, but it's also an opportunity for us to really push our you know, communication of our work and the importance of it. So that's a great point. And now we also are seeing a transition and a shift toward a lot of AI and machine learning and science. So where do you see Earth and space science's place in this fast changing area? Yeah, it's, uh, it's a question that you almost universally get as a, a science communicator now whenever you give a talk, right, <laughs> is, is how is AI going to impact this field? Um, with the massive caveat that I am not an expert in AI or machine learning, uh, I think what I see as, as a, an opportunity for that uh, field to impact Earth and space science and climate science is in the, the area of extreme weather prediction. Um, so to the extent that AI and machine learning can be used to inform how and where extreme weather events might impact different parts of the country and the world um, and help with that kind of analysis and adaptation efforts uh, yeah. could be an important way, of, I think, a, a beneficial use of that technology. Yeah, absolutely. And while AI is important, people are still very important for science and science has always been powered by people. So how can we as a global scientific community keep growing and attracting new and diverse professionals to our field? It's a challenging question. Um, it's a question that uh, not only touches on the scientific field, but also the policy field. Um, we have a real issue with diversity, right? And we need to, to fix things. Uh, there's not one easy answer to do that. Um, in one sense, you know, grad school is not the most lucrative pathway. So if you're interested in attracting folks from low income backgrounds, um, the, the prospect of pursuing grad school and a PhD in postdoc uh, as it currently stands is not really a, an attractive option to people from low income backgrounds. Um, at the same time, you know, at earlier stages, I think there's really uh, important work to be done on reaching kids from all different backgrounds um, and, and showing them that science is, is for everybody, right? Science yeah. is not just for the, the older white people. Yes, that is a very important point. And lastly, how do you think global policy can be strengthened, specifically surrounding climate change? Yeah, um, so I think in the US, we have the real challenge. And, and in the, the democratic world, policy, what happens in policy is correlated to what the public would like to happen. Um, and I think the challenge around climate and many other science policy issues is just the amount of disinformation and misinformation out there. And so that's sort of the, I think, the challenge of our times as, as science policy professionals and communicators is to meet that and uh, to, to address those concerns about misinformation. Um, and that's not an easy thing to do. It's, it's more than just showing results and publications, but 
showing how scientists come to those results and conclusions of their papers and why we're confident in those results and really explaining the how yes. rather than the telling the, the, the what. Yes, absolutely. Scientists are really good at making publications, but we're not often all that great at communicating them to lay audiences, to the general public, which is really important if we want their trust. Well, thank you so much for coming on and sharing all this insight. Thanks for having me.